Hello everyone, welcome back. In this presentation, we will focus on the AES security and the implementation aspects. Let's dive into the outcomes first. Upon the completion of the session, the learner will be able to outcome number one, understand the security of AES and outcome number two, we will see the various implementation aspects of AES. Before stepping into the security of AES, let's see some interesting things about AES. This AES is also called as Rindell cipher. Why it is called as Rindell cipher? Let's see the answer for this now. Actually, a replacement for DES was desperately needed at the time since DES uses a smaller key size which is 64 bits. At the same time, the DES alternative which is multiple encryption and triple DES is slow and also it is having small block size. So desperately, an alternative to DES triple DES was needed. So what NIST decided NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, issued a call for ciphers in the year 1997. And 15 candidates accepted in June 1998 and 5 were shortlisted finally. Now in this competition, I will refer this as AES competition. Because they were looking for the advanced encryption standard, which can replace DES and triple DES. And this AES competition was based on many factors. The cipher should be a private key symmetric block cipher. So it means it is a symmetric cipher as well as it should be a block cipher. Also the key size should be greater than DES. So obviously 128 bits or 192 bits or 256 bit key size was required. At the same time the proposed cipher should be stronger and faster than triple DES. And also it should provide full specification and design details and it should be implemented in two languages C and Java. And you know in this AES competition which cipher was the winner? The Rindale cipher was the winner. And this Rindell cipher was named as the Advanced Encryption Standard, the AES. The Rindell cipher which was proposed has been selected as the Advanced Encryption Standard in October 2000. This AES was designed by Vincent Ridgman and John Demon in Belgium. So these two gentlemen have actually developed this AES algorithm or the Rindell cipher. And the best thing about this AES algorithm or the AES encryption standard or Rindell cipher is that it's simplicity. Because of the algorithm being so simple, it's widely used. You may be asking, if it is simple, it is obviously easy to attack, right? So the answer I will demystify shortly. But before that, you should understand that this AES is actually a simple algorithm and it operates on 128 bits data which is the input and the output i mean the plain text and the cipher text or 16 bytes of data and the aes has three standards 128 192 and 256 it means the key size so aes 128 or aes 192 or aes 256 let's now move on to the security of aes talking about the security of aes we are very clear that this aes was designed after des so obviously most of the well-known attacks on DES were already tested on AES and after that only the AES has been standardized and AES is widely used. So that's what the next point says that most of the known attacks on DES were already tested on AES. And when you compare this AES with DES, we have a lot of differences. And one of the major difference between DES and AES is that the key size. In DES the key size is of 64 bits. Whereas in AES we have three standards of keys. Number 1 AES 128, number 2 AES 192 and number 3 AES 256. When we compare the key size of AES with DES, obviously the key size is larger. What happens when the key size or the key space becomes larger? Which attack becomes tougher when the key size is larger? Obviously brute force attack becomes tougher. So brute force attack becomes impractical on AES. Is AES resistant against brute force attack only? No. AES is resistant against statistical attacks as well. What do you mean by this attack? When you are given a cipher text, the statistical analysis on the cipher text is very difficult and that is why AES is said to be stronger enough against statistical attack as well. At the same time, we have already seen differential and linear cryptanalysis or differential and linear attacks and there is no differential and linear cryptanalysis or attacks carried out on AES yet. And these were some of the reasons why AES is widely used and why AES is so powerful. We are done with the AES security aspects. Let's now move on to the implementation aspects of AES. Talking about the implementation aspects of AES, I already told you that AES is a very simple algorithm. Because of its simplicity, it's widely used. 
These simple algorithms, what is there in the AES is one of the major reasons for implementing in variety of places, variety of applications, even in hardware, software, everywhere, AES can be adopted in many places. Does being simple a concern on attacks? Obviously no, not only because of it is being simple, but also it is resistant towards known attack. And because of the code compactness, this AES can work on many CPUs, irrespective of the hardware, irrespective of the manufacturer, AES can be well adopted in multiple hardwares because of the AES code compactness. And not only this, it can also operate well on cheap processors and requires minimum amount of memory. Cheap processors, what I mean here is, it's not in terms of cost, but also in terms of performance. Even a slow performing processor can also execute AES in a decent manner. So irrespective of the hardware, since the AES algorithm is simple, it's resistant against attack and core compactness is there. So it can be well adopted in cheap processors and also it consumes a limited amount of memory. And not only that, this AES algorithm is very efficient. And these are the various reasons why this AES is implemented in variety of platforms. Say if you want to do a secure data transmission, you have a source machine and you have a destination machine. And when you adopt AES for your secure data transmission, so data is also going to be transmitted at the same time for converting the plain text into ciphertext, it will not be requiring a lot of time. It will not be requiring a high performance machine. It is not going to take a lot of code for doing this. In simple terms, it can be implemented easily because these AES are simple algorithms, they are resistant towards attacks, the code is compact, also it can work on variety of hardwares by consuming limited memory. Also I would like to introduce a website to you. You have a lot of websites on the internet to see an AES example. I request you to visit this website, I am just clicking on this website. You can also prefer other websites. What you can do here is you can choose the AES configuration. Also, you can have the AES variants. We have seen the three variants, right? The AES 256 or AES 128 or AES 192. You have other variants which I am not going to talk now because these are all the modes of operations. I am just preferring AES 128 here. So obviously AES 128 requires 10 rounds. Also, you can see the SBOX related details here. This is the SBOX that is actually used by the AES algorithm. You can give the input key value. So you can just click on this. You can give the input key here. Remember, we have chosen AES 128. So you give the key value here and then you can choose the input here. What input? The playing text. So just convert your playing text into hexadecimal and feed the 128 bit input here. Make sure your input key size and the playing text size is of 128 bits because we have chosen AES 128. Then after giving the input, you will find what happens in round 1, what happens in round 2 and what happens in round 3. All the rounds you can explore and you can see how the playing text is converted into cipher text round by round. At the same time, you will also witness that like this, AES is also having a strong avalanche effect. And that's it guys. I hope now you understood the security of AES and also we have seen the implementation aspects of AES. I hope you guys enjoyed this presentation and thank you for watching.